Wankel engines work very differently than piston engines, thus completely different modifications must be done in order to gain more performance out of them. In this video, we are going to delve into engine porting of the Wankel engine. The Wankel engine is much simpler than a common reciprocating engine. The only parts that move inside are the rotor and the eccentric shaft. As they lack camshafts and a valve train system, the principle of getting air charged inside is a little different. The rotary engine uses ports for this. With any given shape of the intake port, the drivability, fuel consumption and power band changes accordingly and can drastically impact the engine's behavior. Generally speaking, the bigger the port, more powerful and less daily drivable it is. Engine porting of the Wankel engine has basically the same effect as porting piston engine heads. What it does is that it changes the intake stroke duration and adjusts the aggressiveness of the airflow as the equivalent of variable valve timing and high lift cams. It can be done by grinding off the material from the rotary housing. For this purpose, there are iron plate templates in order to get an accurate shape unless you are a rotary specialist. Stock port Stock port is a standard type of porting and is suitable for the best daily drivability and the lowest fuel consumption possible. They were normally used on the 12A engine and can reach 180 horsepower at most. This can easily be upgraded into mild, extended or bridge type porting. Pros Great drivability and fuel efficiency. Cons Limited power potential. Mild street port. The mild port is the basic street port modification to improve your top end power if you don't mind a little low end torque loss. This is done by grinding off the top edge of the stock port to prolong the intake stroke duration a little. Power figures can reach numbers around 200 horsepower. Pros retains good daily drivability. Cons slight fuel consumption increase. Extended port Extended porting is probably the best of both worlds. The port is significantly larger with the power potential up to 220 horsepower, but the trade-off would be a noticeable torque loss under 4000 RPM, though it still is a usable street engine. It works best with an upgraded intake and exhaust system. This method will give you the typical rough idle you hear on YouTube a lot. Pros: good power increase while retaining drivability. Cons: higher fuel consumption and noise and the need for modified intake and exhaust systems to maximize power. Bridgeport the bridge-ported engine is distinguished by an eyebrow-like opening over the primary modified port. The bridge between the two openings is there to prevent the corner seals to falling out and damaging themselves, as the port is now very close to the wall. This configuration drastically changes the power band, pushing the rev limit to 8000 revs. It is possible to reach up to 280 horsepower while, as mentioned previously, daily drivability and fuel consumption gets worse. Pros: significant 
power increase with higher rev range, cons poor drivability, fuel consumption and excessive noise. J or monster port. The monster or J type of port represents the limit where you can go with the unconventional side housing ports. Basically, it is a more aggressive variation of the bridge port and it goes as far as the to the water gallery. Thus, this requires extra blocking to prevent water leakage. This porting isn't suitable for daily driving and is mostly used where peripheral porting isn't allowed. With this setup, output around 300 horsepower is reachable. Pros: 5 to 10 percent power increase than a bridge port engine without the expense of peripheral port. Cons: Short lifespan, narrow power band, requirement for a free-flowing exhaust, poor drivability. Peripheral port. The peripheral port is the ultimate type of porting that is possible on a Wankel engine. The side ports no longer exist while a huge circular or peripheral hole is created directly on the rotor housing. This causes a very rough idle and can be recognized easily in the engine bay by its tubular intake manifold. This engine cannot idle below 2000 revs and over 8000 is where the fun starts. However, the usable rev range can pass the 10,000 RPM PM mark easily. A big free-flowing exhaust is needed and a very low engine life is expected. Pros: The highest power potential as possible. Cons: Excessive noise, very poor drivability and fuel consumption, very narrow power band, very short life and extremely expensive. <laughs> So there you have it, the larger the ports you have, the crazier you are. Keep in mind that the more aggressive you go, the worse the engine's fuel consumption and drivability and will also be a lot more expensive in case you need to send it to a rotary specialist. I hope you have learned something from this video like I did researching it and enjoyed watching it. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't already and see you next time.